Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chocolate bark. That's right, usually my bark is worse than my bite, but not this time. And besides biting this bark for your own personal pleasure, this beautiful and easy to make confection would make a great edible holiday gift, which as we've discussed in the past, is a great way to show people we care about them without spending the money that proves it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we need to figure out is exactly what we're going to add to our chocolate. And for this version, I'm going to be going with the following three ingredients. And those would be some pistachio nuts. And these have been shelled, roasted, and salted. We're also going to go with some of these beautiful dried goji berries, which if I'm not mistaken are the berry of the goji tree, or shrub, or plant. I've never seen one, but they're very delicious and very festive looking. And then last but not least, I'm also going to go with some toasted walnuts. And then if we want, we can also include one optional ingredient. And that would be a little sprinkling of extra coarse sea salt, which I think is a nice touch. And then once we have all that stuff decided on, we can move on to the most important ingredient, our chocolate. And what I have here are six four ounce bars of dark chocolate that is 70% cacao. And you could go with a little lower percentage of cacao, but I am recommending something between 60 and 70% cacao. And I mention that mostly because I really enjoy saying the word cacao. And what we need to do before we temper our chocolate is go ahead and chop this into small pieces, which is not that hard. The most difficult part is not having it fly all over as you cut, and also trying not to eat too much as you do it. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and chop up a pound and a half of dark chocolate, and then we're gonna separate it into one third and two thirds portions. Because while making this, I wanted to test out a shortcut method for tempering the chocolate which involves us melting two thirds of the chocolate and then stirring the one third portion into that. Okay, the classic professional way is we melt and heat the chocolate to a very specific temperature and then we cool it down and heat it back up. So instead of that, I decided to try this sounds too good to be true method to hopefully achieve the same results. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two thirds of our chocolate to this bowl and we're just gonna do this by eye. And like I said, we will reserve one third of the chocolate to add later. And to melt the chocolate, what we'll do is heat up a couple inches of water until it just barely starts to simmer. And then we'll reduce our heat to low and place a bowl over the top to create what we call in the business a double boiler. And by the way, be sure your heat's on the lowest possible setting. And then what we'll do is add our two thirds portion into that and basically stand there and watch it melt. And we're not gonna stir this until we think approximately two thirds of the chocolate is melted. All right, give or take, which for me looked to be about right here. Although it's hard to see with all that glare. And what we'll do when it reaches that point is give it a stir with our silicone spatula. And we'll keep it over low heat, stirring occasionally until all that chocolate's melted and the mixture feels hot to the touch. Okay, not super hot, like hot bath water. Okay, about 115, 120 degrees is good. So I tested that with my finger and it was hot to the touch. And once it does reach that point, we'll go ahead and add the one third of the chocolate we reserved. And we'll give that a quick stir. And then just as soon as that's been stirred in, to finish this up, what we'll do is remove this from the heat, set it down on the table, and basically let it cool down stirring occasionally until it's cool to the touch. And by then all your chocolate will have melted. And you should have a very smooth, very shiny bowl of melted chocolate. And by the way, I should have already mentioned, the whole idea with tempering the chocolate is so that once it firms back up, it keeps a nice firm snappy texture and not a soft waxy texture. Okay, when we break a piece of this, it should snap like our original bar of chocolate. So I kept stirring and testing with my finger until I thought it had cooled down enough. And I probably should have let it gone farther until it started to thicken up a little bit, but I'm sort of impatient. Plus the sun was going down. So I decided mine was cool enough and proceeded to pour that onto my lined baking sheet. And I'm using a silicone mat here but parchment paper or plastic wrap will work also. But anyway, I went ahead and poured my chocolate on. Like I said, probably a little too soon. And then what we'll do while this stuff is still wet is sprinkle over our toppings. So I started with my walnuts, which as you can see, I chopped up. Or right, I'm gonna leave my dried goji berries whole, but I did decide to chop up my walnuts and pistachios. So how much or even if you're gonna chop this stuff is up to you. All right, that's all gonna depend on the texture and appearance of the surface you're going for. So you decide. You are after all the Bob Marley of how gnarly to make your bark. But as you can see, I did chop mine up pretty well. And besides whether to chop or not, 
you also have to decide how much to put on. All right, some people go for almost completely full coverage, but personally, I do like to see a good amount of chocolate, but I was still pretty generous. And then once my fruit and nuts were applied, I finished up with a light sprinkling of our sea salt. And that is it. All we need to do is let this cool down and harden up, which should happen right on the tabletop. But again, I was worried about my light, so I cheated and popped mine in the fridge for a few minutes, at which point I pulled it out, and it looked like this. And I have to be honest, I was a little concerned, because it wasn't that shiny. So I really wasn't sure at this point if that shortcut tempering method worked. But as I started to break this up, it actually felt pretty good. And was snapping apart in nice clean pieces. Although it does help that this was cold. But later, even at room temp, it did break up pretty cleanly. And if you hold it at the right angle, the surface did have a little bit of sheen to it. Which is a good sign. So I will deem the shortcut tempering method acceptable. But having said that, I'm also going to provide links in the blog post to the actual professional tempering method in case you want to use that. Because that'll produce a bark that comes out even shinier and crisper. But anyway, I went ahead and finished breaking that up. Some people like to cut it. But I think the irregular broken pieces look much better. And way more bark-like. And that's it. Once that's portioned up, we can transfer that into some kind of attractive serving vessel. And enjoy our fruity, nutty chocolate bark. Which obviously can be made with a million different combinations of toppings. But having said that, these three work very well. Especially with that little touch of sea salt. And as I mentioned, the whole point of that tempering step is so you can snap the chocolate like this. Okay, it's not like it's going to be terrible if it's soft. But if you temper, the texture is going to be much nicer. And more like a piece of nice chocolate versus a piece of cheap chocolate. So let me go ahead and try one more piece. Before I move along and remind you what a great edible gift this would make. Presented in some type of festive container. Preferably with a bow. And that, my friends, would make one very nice edible gift. And remember what we say when it comes to giving edible gifts. We're not cheap. We're creative. But anyway, that's it. A holiday-themed chocolate bark. Like I said, I wanted to try that shortcut tempering method, which did work out pretty good. But like I said, in the blog post, I will provide links to show you how to do it for real. But either way, professional method or shortcut, whether you're making this for yourself or for a gift, or both, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>